The killings of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman are crimes that remain unsolved. The opinions expressed in this series represent just some of the many conceivable scenarios regarding how those crimes may have occurred. Jason Simpson has never been questioned or charged in relation to these crimes, and he has not made any public statements about any allegations regarding his involvement. We encourage viewers to reach their own conclusions. Previously, I'm convinced O.J. never committed this murder, but it was O.J.'s son, Jason Lamar Simpson. That's a lot. Facts don't line up. We're going to say bunk. According to the time card, he checked in at 2.30 and out at 10.30. But what do you find strange about it? It's handwritten. This is a picture of Jason Simpson wearing a knit cap that looks exactly like the knit cap found at the crime scene. I want you to notice that this is a photograph taken at the crime scene showing Nicole's watch. It was broken and stopped at 9.59 p.m. Now, the most shocking of all, I believe this is the weapon that killed Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. It belonged to Jason Simpson. Do you think something like this knife could cause the type of injury you see in the photos? It's certainly a possibility. It's a positive reaction. There's something that just came up. For all we know, Nicole's DNA or Ron's DNA could be on the knife. Oh my god, this could be a game changer. When the Los Angeles Police Department arrested O.J. Simpson for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman, they set the stage for the so-called trial of the century. Now, we will show you the other side of the smiling face you saw in the Hertz commercial. A man's life is at stake. The last thing I told her is that I loved her. Through a trial that lasted 135 days, a cast of characters emerged. Each one providing their own piece of the puzzle. Detective Van Adder took Rockingham and I took Bundy as a crime scene. This shows you the defendant's Ford Bronco. You see the tags? Those all indicate blood spots. That blood on the uh, panel matches the defendant. The blood indicated here matches the defendant. The blood on the panel here matches the defendant. Matches the defendant. Matches the defendant. The evidence against O.J. Simpson seemed overwhelming. This blood stain that is consistent with a mixture of the defendant, Ron Goldman, and Nicole Brown. And you did not write down on the plastic bag the number of swatches that were put into it? No. But the defense team skillfully began to counter, citing sloppy evidence collecting. And when you removed the swatches from the plastic bag, you made no notation about how many swatches you were removing from one of those plastic bags and coin envelopes. That's correct. The defense also cast doubt on the integrity of the LAPD. Have you ever falsified a police report? I wish to assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. A key architect of this approach was forensic expert Dr. Henry Lee, who contended the police were not only inept, they were also corrupt. Henry Lee says that those, those butt swatches are basically tampered with sometime in the evening on the early morning hours of June 13th. Considered the world's most famous crime scene analyst, Dr. Lee has built that reputation by assisting on over 6,000 cases around the country. At the trial, his testimony ended with a controversial conclusion. Only opinion I can give under this circumstance, something wrong. To help in their independent investigation of Bill Deere's theory of the murders, investigators Derek Lavasser and Chris Mahandi have invited Dr. Lee to go over the evidence presented at trial. As a police officer, I received my education on textbooks written by Henry Lee. So having an opportunity to break down one of the biggest cases in American history is huge. What does the evidence that you've reviewed tend to point towards in terms of what actually occurred that evening? It's difficult with this particular case. The scene 
wasn't secured too well. So you have a lot of a red flag with this case. The crime scene, we only look at it through the photographer's eye. You're limited by what was provided to you. Whatever they choose to take a picture. The LAPD did not allow Dr. Lee to visit the crime scene until 12 days after the murders. By then, he was only able to view the evidence through official crime scene photographs. Okay, here, this picture depicts Nicole's body. We observe seven vertical, low-velocity passive dripping, blood dripping down. When we pointed out, they said they did not see it. And this office, they cleaned the body, did the autopsy. Those seven drops of blood that were found on her back were never tested to determine whether it came from the killer. They washed it. Had they tested that blood that was on her back and it was determined to be O.J. Simpson's blood. Face closed. Dr. Lee says that while the untested blood from the Cole's back is troubling, photos of Ron's body raise additional questions. As you can see, Ron Goldman, his head, have a lot of injury. That's a slash wound. Also, lost of half of the fingernail. That kind of injury, you're probably in a close hand-to-hand -hand combat. You examined O.J. Did he have any bruises consistent with that on his body? I did not find any. The only marking Dr. Lee did find was a cut on O.J.'s left middle finger, which O.J. claimed came from handling a broken glass in his Chicago hotel room. And what, what type of cuts do those look like to you? This is a curvature type of thing. Mm -hmm. Would that be consistent with O.J.'s ex uh, explanation of it being a glass? It could be if you... Smash the glass. Smash the glass, depends on your finger. Incompetence is one thing, but Dr. Lee's investigation led the defense team to believe that the LAPD's actions were possibly corrupt. He found troubling contradictions with a pair of bloody socks found in O.J.'s bedroom that tested positive for both Nicole and O.J.'s blood. The theory is Nicole grabbed O.J.'s ankle and caused the blood transfer onto the socks. The only problem is, laboratory results shows, one side outside found blood, and inside found blood. The other side, inside have blood, right. outside no blood. And for Dr. Henry Lee, there's only one way to explain this. No foot in between the socks. Yeah. The socks not having a foot in it, and the blood literally being dropped onto it in order to create that. They have a videotape from O.J.'s house. Here's the carpet. We did not see a image of a socks. So in the top left corner, that was taken at 3.13 p.m. on June 13th. There's no sock in there. And in the photograph underneath, which was presumably taken after by the evidence collection team, the socks should be in both of those. They don't match. During the trial, the defense team pushed the theory that the LAPD planted evidence by pointing out that lead detective Philip Van Adder took an evidentiary vial of O.J.'s blood to the crime scene. How many times have you taken blood from Parker Center out to a crime scene? I don't know. This may have been the first time. The prosecution also had to deal with a discrepancy over how much blood investigators took from O.J. while he was in custody and how much remained in the vial. There are 1.5 cc's missing, and that's some of the blood that was tampered in this case. That's very important, isn't it? That's the tube supposed to have a cc there. We only come to about 6.5 cc. In other words, it is possible mm -hmm. that it came from a vial of blood and very carefully dripped so that not too much was used. Is that correct? It's possible. We have EDTA found on the blood sample. How come we have EDTA? EDTA is a blood preservative. When an individual goes to the doctor and has blood drawn, it's normally in a vial and contains a cap. Surrounding that cap is EDTA crystal. That is to preserve the blood for testing at a later date. So this EDTA, you can't just ignore it. Wow. The worst case scenario here is purposeful planting. planting. I'm a cop, and I want to believe the best in, in all the guys that work out in the field, but I can't discredit Dr. Henry Lee, who knows way more about criminal forensics than I ever will. 
But Dr. Lee says perhaps the best example of the LAPD's shoddy investigation is a piece of evidence they chose to ignore. We found possible two track of it shooting. That's Bruno Mongli. Here next to it is a different type of shoes. O.J.'s pair of Bruno Mali shoes famously connected him to the shoe prints at Bundy. But Dr. Lee says the evidence suggests there was a separate set of prints at the crime scene. Could it be the Bruno Magli shoe? No. We see Bruno Magli here. Right there. We see a parallel line here. So you're saying right in that picture, that close to Nicole's head, you have two sets of shoe prints? Yes. Do you know for sure that the second set a shoe prints was not Bruno Mali. Of shoe. course, it's which line does it? If there is a second set of bloody shoe prints, it's a game changer. It definitely points to the possibility there was more than one person involved in this crime somehow. Dr. Lee, could that second set of shoe prints been from one of the detectives walking the scene? All the investigators said we did not wear this kind of shoes, so you eliminate them. How many of the second set of shoe prints did you find at the scene? We look at it probably four. This is a diagram. Shows some shoe prints. Lee's diagram shows the second set of shoe prints going up the stairs and through the walkway. However, sometimes footprints not visible. So we ask, can we use chemical enhancement? The answer is no, we cannot use any chemical, we cannot use any light sources. Why didn't they let you enhance it? Your guess is as good as my guess. To show how the chemical test would have helped the police investigation, the team has asked Dr. Lee to demonstrate the technique on a recreation of Nicole's front steps. Let's say, step into the blood. The first contact. You can actually see bloody footprint. If somebody keep walking, you're going to get less and less. And finally, you don't see anything. So let's show you an enhancement. Oh, wow. You can see it actually getting darker. What is the chemical reaction that's causing that? With the hemoglobin. You see here? Yep. Yes. Before it's not showing, now it's become visible. LAPD didn't let you do it, and they didn't do it, so we missed out on all this valuable we information. Missed valuable information at the crime scene. All of this leads the team to ask Dr. Lee the obvious question about his investigation. Do you believe there were two assailants there? Let that evidence speak for itself. I think two individuals there. The physical evidence suggests could be a second person. Dr. Henry Lee does raise some good questions. 20 plus years later, that's our challenge, this retrospective analysis being fair and impartial. And finally, the investigators want Dr. Lee's take on a key piece of Bill Deere's evidence. If the watch Nicole Simpson was wearing went down and hit, a picture would have been taken at the scene and it indicated 959. Would that change anything? That's a really important discovery because when we investigate the case, Never see a picture of a watch. Because we only get the crime scene photo from LAPD. Why did the LAPD never show this picture to Dr. Lee? This photo could point to the murders being committed at a different time than we thought, and potentially to someone other than OJ. We're going to have to keep digging to get to the truth. In the search for the killer or killers of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman, Derek and Chris have tracked down Tom Lang, one of the lead detectives in the original OJ investigation. What's a little bit about this guy? He was one of the lead investigators on the case. 25 years robbery homicide division. That is the most elite detective division at LAPD. Lang worked in tandem with the late detective Philip Van Adder on the case. But it was Lang who gained national attention when he became the voice of reason during OJ's infamous slow speed Bronco chase. Come on. Just tell AC to pull over, will you? No. Please. No. Don't do this to your kids. Don't do this to your mom. Don't do this to everybody who loves you. No. Lang also came under fire as OJ's legal team repeatedly called the LAPD's investigation inept and corrupt. Somebody play with this evidence. 
So if anyone's going to be able to answer our questions, it's this guy. Tom, thank you for meeting with Derek and I. Sure. Um, what would be your top reasons for why you think O.J. Simpson did this? Why you're convinced he did this? Blood. Blood and more blood. There's only three people's blood involved in this whole case. The two victims and Simpson. His blood was everywhere. We spoke to Dr. Henry Lee, who okay. I'm sure you're aware of. Right. And he is adamant about the fact that there was a second set of shoe prints found at the scene. Okay. Bloody shoe prints. Okay. What do you have to say to that? I like Henry. I respect Henry. Henry does things for money. This guy gets paid to say that we don't like your story. Listen to mine. Where were these footwear impressions? They were next to the body of Nicole the with the Bruno Magli okay. print and okay. also up the stairway near the entrance. He's wrong. He is dead wrong, okay? We had Bill Bodziak look at the photographs that Henry pointed out and he told us without any exception they were a fabric impression from Ron Goldman's shirt. The prosecution called FBI crime scene expert William Bodziak to dispute much of Dr. Lee's testimony. Was that parallel line imprint on the 10th tile that was photographed by Henry Lee, was it even present on June the 13th? In my opinion, it was not present. That's not an imprint, nor is it a shoe print. It was a fabric impression from Ron Goldman's shirt and blood as he was rolling around. So what you're saying... No, it was almost a whole... It almost looked like a whole shoe print. That doesn't exist. You're disputing that there was a second set of bloody shoe prints going up the stairs. Yes. Dr. Lee said that if he had the opportunity to use chemical enhancement and light at the scene, that he would have been able to see the areas where it actually maybe faded as the person moved and yeah. left the scene. Let me tell you this right now. There were two areas that Henry was concerned with. The other one, Bill Bodziak touched it. It was actually a three-dimensional trowel mark. What is it? It's a result of the finishing of the concrete tiles. There's only one set of footprints. That's from Bruno Mollies. When it came to explaining the second set of bloody shoe prints, Detective Lane kind of just dismissed it. But for me, this is something we really need to look into further. Dr. Lee had uh, showed us something about... A picture of the blood that was on the back. Is that all Nicole's blood? I wanted that blood to be examined, so I made those instructions. Unfortunately, they didn't save that blood. They washed her. They washed her. These things happen. The fact that the body was washed took away a lot of potential evidence for a review. I can't say that. We'll never know. We, there's a lot of things we'll never know. We'll never have O.J. Simpson confessing to murder. There was a photograph taken of Nicole Simpson of her watch. And the watch had stopped at 9.59. There's a theory out there that that watch may have been broken during the actual assaults. How would you explain that? That photograph was taken by the coroner. The log showed that they arrived at 9.10 a.m. And they left at 11.20 a.m. At 9.59 a.m., they took the photograph to inventory the wristwatch. 9.59 a.m., not p.m. On my notes, it says operable. It was working. Lang is able to shed light on some of the disputed evidence in the case, but what about the murky details surrounding the bloody socks found at O.J.'s Rockingham estate? There are some people that say that the blood that's on the socks is consistent with it having been dropped on there. What would you say to that? Nonsense. Simpson leaves the crime scene. Within four minutes max, he gets to his house in Rockingham. He goes upstairs and changes, and in his haste, throws the socks on the floor. They're still wet spattered with blood nicole and simpson's blood when you throw them there's nothing in between there's going to be a blood transfer it's called gravity what's all the stuff about edca what do you say to those people that say van etter walked around with a tube of oj's blood in his pocket well, all i'll get your head out of your ass that's the first thing i'm going to say okay fair enough the criminalist is responsible for booking the evidence so he has to get the blood so phil takes the blood over to rockingham that's where the criminalist was it's called chain of custody. Have you ever heard that? You know uh, what that is? Oh, I know what it is. This is chain of custody. And I gotta, I gotta tell you, Tom, because we're speaking candidly, he took blood from the possible suspect and brought it to a crime scene. Which is true. They did do that. But you can see how that but was you're supposed to do that. What no, else would he do? I don't think he would bring it to a crime scene. I understand why he Where did Where would he bring it? What do you think he did? Went inside, ripped the envelope, took the seal no. off the envelope. Well, wait a minute. Now. Let me finish. That. Okay. And it took the tube off, took the seal off the tube, and somehow somebody planted that? It's ridiculous. I'm inclined to go with Lang's explanation that there was no malicious intent on the part of Van Adder. And what strengthened it for me was Nicole Brown Simpson's blood on there. 
And there's no explanation for how that's going to get there other than by the killer. Explain why the video doesn't show the socks in it, but the photograph does. Okay. The administrative videos, they're taken after the evidence is picked up. That video was shot after the criminalist had collected the socks. This thing about contamination, have you ever heard of a murder scene that was not contaminated? Oh, no. Does yeah. that exist? Of course not. Murders don't occur in sterile lab settings. They occur out in the mud, the blood, and the beer. If you want to say all of the DNA gleaned from this case was contaminated, why was it all contaminated to the extent it all comes back to O.J. Simpson or one of the two victims? Well, what about the knit cap? Is the evidence definitely connected to O.J.? The knit cap, we have six hairs that were consistent with Simpson. So what do you mean by consistent? Consistent meaning it was an African-American male? African-American could not do DNA because you cannot do DNA on a hair follicle unless there's some flesh or something attached. So we can't definitively say it's specifically O.J. Simpson because we couldn't get his DNA. You say African-American male, Jason. All I can say, once again, is that they were indeed consistent. That leaves the door open a little bit. Okay. Detective Lamb definitely believes the LAPD did a thorough job, but the hair found in the knit cap. This was probably one of their weaker pieces of evidence linking O.J. Simpson. All it really ruled out was that it was a Caucasian male. For me, it does create a, a margin of error. There's no doubt about it. What's your response to the people out there that say, hey, you know what, the LAPD, they operated with blinders on. They had tunnel vision. They thought it was O.J. That was their guy. They didn't even bother to ask anybody else. That is false. This case generated 50 5-0 additional suspects, including Jason Simpson, that there's no evidence that showed he was involved. In fact, everything showed that he and Nicole got along really, really good. He was not interviewed. We wanted to interview him, but when they get a lawyer and he says he's not going to talk, we don't get an interview. But there's no evidence that anyone else was involved in these murders. It's as simple as that. None. What did y'all get from the meeting with Lang last night? We found him to be pretty open and really had a lot of strong opinions. He was not holding anything back. Could he 100% rule out the possibility that there could have been two people there? The one thing that I found interesting that kind of gave some credence to possibly two people being there was the knit cap and the hair found within it. And they could only conclude that the hair was consistent with an African-American male, not that it was specifically OJ's. OJ Simpson was never seen wearing a knit wool cap, but Jason, Wore it all the time. As you can see, he's wearing what appears to be the similar cap that was found at the Bundy crime scene. When is this dog photo from? Uh, that was in 93. Okay. We also have witnesses who said shortly after the murders, the black knit cap did not appear any longer, but a gray cap similar to this one, as you'll see with Jason wearing it. December of 1994. And there was a lot of these photographs prior to the murder and now after the murder. What conclusions are you drawing here, Bill? What happened to the black cap? Why would you change all of a sudden to a knit cap that is not the same color as you've been wearing. I have a consideration, Bill. All right, let's hear it. It was out there in the media that a black watch cap had been found at the scene and that he decided that he wasn't going to wear something that was associated with the murders. You're looking at it as a psychologist. Another theory is, what if his dad borrowed that one from him and that's the one that was left at the scene? There's some great possibilities. To me, the big picture is this was overlooked then and should not be overlooked now. This is LAPD's homicide. We're doing this. Now we're having to go back after 23 years. We're looking for the truth. I put my life and my reputation of 50 years on the line. I believe in what I'm doing. And did LAPD forget to do what they should have done? Time has only added to the questions surrounding this case. To track down some answers, Bill Deere suggests the next move for the investigators. There's somebody I'd like for you to talk to, and that's Andrea Scott. The red Toyota that Ron Goldman was driving on the night of June 12th belonged to her, and the car keys that were found at the crime scene, those were her car keys. When you talk to her, I think she's going to enlighten you a great deal. Because of her close relationship with Ron, Andrea Scott has chosen to remain silent until now. She's agreed to meet with Derek in an effort to shed new light on the case. My interview with Andrea Scott is a great opportunity for me to get an inside perspective of who Ron Goldman was as a person, and it gives me a better sense of why I'm here and who I'm working for. How would you describe Ron, if you can describe him in a couple words, for somebody who's never met him? Just full of kindness and happiness. He was a cool guy. 
always joking, very charismatic, really good guy, very good friend. You still do miss him, you can tell. How did Ron end up driving your car that night? Well, Ron was looking after my dog while I was out of town. Okay, so he was dog sitting. Yes. All right. All and right. so because he didn't have a car, I said, please take my car. So the car keys were actually found next to Ron's body. When did you get those back? I'm going to say three or four days I got the, the detective delivered the car keys to me. Do you remember his name? I don't. No, and he just says, hey, here are your keys. How does he give he them to you? He gave them to me in an evidence bag. Oh, they were still inside Sealed the evidence bag? evidence bag. Okay. Cut open the top and let me reach in, and the keys were caked in blood. To wash it off, I had to physically... You rub the keys it. off yourself? Yes. It was awful. And that must be something you, you don't forget. It was awful, never, no. Did they look like they had been examined at all, or they just kind of the same way they were when they found them? It looked like they had picked them up, put them in the bag, closed the bag. The inside of the bag had still blood in it as well. Unbelievable. It, it seems like those emotions are still are still with you. Yeah, it's hard. This doesn't go away. I am sorry for your loss. That's definitely the reason I'm out here. I want the truth for not only Ron, but his family, and for his friends. And I thank you for meeting with me because it gives me more motivation to keep going to try to figure out what actually happened that night. So thank you. Thank you. In the team's meeting with Dr. Lee, he pointed out OJ's cut finger. If Andrea's keys were bloody, could Ron have used them to defend himself, cutting OJ's finger in the process? Or did the blood belong to someone other than OJ Simpson? And the LAPD chose to ignore this evidence. Andrea described the keys to me as caked with blood, which tells me there was probably a lot of evidence on them. I thought Detective Lang was pretty honest. He feels they did a proper job, but it's starting to appear that there were flaws in the LAPD's investigation. And we don't know what the truth is. The revelation from Andrea Scott that the LAPD returned her car keys still covered in blood and sealed in an evidence bag has intensified the team's focus on the integrity of the LAPD's investigation into the murders of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. As they expand their investigation, the team has arranged a meeting with Bill Pavlik. Once an LAPD detective himself, Pavlik quit over frustrations with the department. As lead investigator for O.J. Simpson's defense team, he helped build a case against his former employer. After your investigation, what was your overall impression of what happened that night? It is a $64,000 question. I concluded from the uh, very beginning that the killings involved more than one suspect. To this day, I am equally as convinced of that. Do you believe one of those individuals was O.J.? Without a doubt. But my job is basically to furnish the lawyers with the most cogent arguments of reasonable doubt. Because after all, we are working for the defense. I disagree with Bill Pavlik. O.J. Simpson did not commit these murders, but I thought it was remarkable that he said, I've always believed there were two people there. When you started to realize that there was possibly a second person there, yes. who were some of the people that you thought may have been involved? We had kind of a jaundiced eye on Jason. Jason was on probation at the time of the murders for assaulting his previous employer. That's exactly the reason why we lawyered him up. Were you aware at the time what Jason's alibi was? He basically punched out of a restaurant. The time frame that the prosecution was focused on, 10-15, would uh, more or less take him up of the timeline. You said something interesting right there. I think it's the cop in me. You said the time frame that the prosecution was focused on would yeah. take him out of play. That's my guy. But maybe that wasn't the time frame, was it? Here's a problem that you had in the case. Nicole was wearing the watch. We believe that when she fell down and hit the ground, that the watch basically uh, stopped working, and that was the, uh, the time of the attack. So it doesn't make sense. Did anyone ever check to see if the watch was still operable after the murders? I believe it was one of the sisters when the watch was returned to them, the watch was damaged. Hearing all of this from Bill Pavlik, I had my reservations. According to Detective Lang, the watch was still operable when they examined it. I want to bring up an interesting thing that occurred. I spoke with Andrea Scott, who actually loaned... Congratulations. I'm going to tell you something. 
I've been waiting for this for 20 years. I am absolutely elated that you did that. When she arrived back in Los Angeles, the detectives returned her keys to her. She told me there was blood on the keys. You know, in self-defense classes, we teach if you have the keys, you use the keys as a stabbing instrument to defend yourself. Ron Goldman had a set of keys in his hands, and he fought gallantly. You could see those defense wounds. Uh, it's incredible how violently this, this, this young man uh, uh, was attacked and died. I received the property report. It says keys. It didn't say bloody keys. There's just no excuse for this. This was the mother of all evidence in the O.J. Simpson case. And the reason is because he would either exonerate O.J. or he would absolutely inculpate him. That tells me a lot. But I believe they were tested and they didn't like the results. It's no longer incompetent. I believe that was a cover-up to conceal the truth. I don't believe that the LAPD is corrupt to the core. I know that for a fact there's a lot of good cops, but I do have my issues with robbery homicide division. Any statements? No comment. I've seen corruption. I've seen planting of evidence. This was a clear-cut case of let's get the son of a bitch. He's the only suspect. And uh, framing a guilty man, they could care less. Framing a guilty man, police cover-up, these are strong allegations, and I'm not completely convinced. But Bill Pavlik has had many years as a detective, and he's seen the LAPD up close. We're going to have to find out if Andrea Scott's keys were ever tested, and if not, why. I think you guys are on the right track. If you remember anything about the old detective here is, there's no statute of limitation when it comes to the truth. As the investigators explore Bill Deere's theory on the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman, they meet once again with former LAPD detective Tom Lang. He'll be able to walk them through the blood evidence discovered in perhaps the world's most infamous SUV. Wow, here it is. Bring back any memories, oh Tom? Oh boy, it certainly does. Lang will summarize the evidence using a Bronco identical to O.J. Simpson's. At Rockingham, we found a little speck of blood just above the door handle, right where you see this arrow here. And that speck of blood, I believe, was deposited there from Simpson's left hand. If you recall, he's got a cut on his middle finger of his left hand. Look at my middle knuckle. Mm -hmm. It's going to fit right where that blood speck was. Now, this particular spot, there was an insufficient amount of blood to type. So, although you believe the blood on the outside of the Bronco was, in fact, OJ's, there's no scientific evidence at this point to support that. Correct. Some of that is also true inside. If you fellas want to step around here, the inside of the driver's door. We have three areas. One here near the edge of the door, one by the wind wing, and then down above the handle, we have a presence of blood. If you see, we have several more arrows inside. Right here on the firewall... Now this blood did in fact come back to O.J. Simpson through DNA testing. However, this one here, this is Nicole Brown's blood. Really? So already in this presentation, we already have a positive identification of O.J. Simpson's blood and a positive identification of Nicole Simpson's blood. Correct. Okay, let's go to the steering wheel. We have a mixture of Nicole and Simpson's blood. That indicates an interaction during a struggle, a fight. You've got so much blood at the Bundy location. And should it be on the gas pedal? Shouldn't it be on the brake pedal? Why isn't there more blood than this? We don't know. To me, looking at this as a homicide detective, I've never seen so much blood. You've got people sitting on death row with a lot less, let's put it that way. Okay, looking at the passenger side, if you look at the backrest, we have more blood. Again, this is an insufficient amount to type. If only OJ's in the car, why the blood on the passenger seat? Your guess is as good as mine. You see there's another arrow down here on the right side of the console. We have more blood. Now this is a mixture of blood of O.J. Simpson and Ron Goldman. Really? Wow. That's our first hit for Ron Goldman in his Correct. Car. What's interesting, at this point, we only have Nicole and O.J. on the driver's side, but now in the passenger's area, we have Ron and O.J. I mean, that's a tough spot for blood, Ty. I mean, that's really down in there. Is there yeah. Did you guys ever speculate on any other type of scenarios that may have caused it to get on that side of the console? Is he looking for this? What's that? This is the illumination bulb that belongs up here that's been removed 
that I found under the passenger seat during a subsequent search. Now, why did he do that, pulling into a dark alley? So he didn't get illuminated when the door opened. You can't see anything. If Tom Lang's light bulb theory is true, that points to the crime being premeditated and not the result of some spontaneous argument. And that's big. So, he's in here. This seems like a natural place for a big guy to be resting his hands. Or he's going to open this up to get something out of it. His hand comes along the edge here. He's got the bulb out. Maybe he's looking. Maybe he keeps it up here. He throws it up here. Maybe put it over here. I buy most of it, and it's, it's all probable. This spot in particular gives me a little bit of trouble, only because it's so far out of the way. Definitely leaves some questions in my mind. If I'm driving erratically, like our witnesses are telling us, I'm probably not driving with just one hand on the wheel. I might be driving with two. There could have been two people that created this blood transfer and still only have O.J., Nicole, and Ron. Maybe the other person's not injured. They had some blood on their back from one of the victims. Or O.J., they sit in this passenger seat. That makes more sense. I mean, is it weird that there's blood drops on the passenger side if he's driving the car by himself? Sometimes you have to say, I don't know, I wasn't there. Just like the case itself, the blood evidence found on the passenger side of the Bronco seems to grow more perplexing the longer you look at it. If you thought we had an enigma inside, we found blood on the outside of the passenger door, right here. Again, it was an insufficient amount to type. Would you agree that more than likely it was one of our three individuals that we identified inside the car? Not really. We don't know that. So it could be a fourth person is what you're telling me. We're never going to know. Show me the evidence that that happened. Blood on the passenger door adds more validity to the theory that there was somebody else involved in these horrible crimes. Could it be Jason? Is it some other unknown person? These are unanswered questions. Even though Tom Lang strongly believes that O.J. Simpson acted alone, Derek and Chris have learned too much not to question why Lang and his investigators failed to test a piece of evidence that could have proved exactly who the killer was. I met with a woman by the name of Andrea Scott. She was actually the owner of Ron Goldman's car. And she stated that the police officer, she couldn't remember who, handed the keys back to her, still caked with blood, still sealed in an evidence bag, which he cut open in front of her. I'm going to say right offhand, I would not believe that. Okay. I don't believe that for a minute. She didn't seem like she had any motive. She was pretty uh, she was pretty naive to the whole process. I don't know why she would say such a thing. Now, let me throw it back at you. Roger, who cares? Well, I think I, think I would there, care. There, there, was, there was a theory that the best source of evidence for who the attacker was would be whose blood was actually on those keys. If this really happened, it should not have happened. That's just sloppy police work. This is hard to understand. It's not these 50 things that you do that's gonna, you're going to be questioned about. It's the one thing you don't do. But because it wasn't done, now we're questioning it. While Derek and Chris feel they're on the trail to the truth, have they found enough evidence that someone other than O.J. Simpson could possibly have murdered Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman? Tell you what, Derek, meeting with Detective Lang, the detective, having him walk us through that Bronco from an investigative standpoint, eye-opening. Guy knows his stuff. Yeah. On the other hand, there was two spots of blood that he couldn't explain, the blood on the passenger side door and the blood on the passenger seat, which opens up the possibility to a second person. Which he owned. I mean, he owned the fact that they couldn't identify whose blood it was, right. and he accepted the possibility that it could have been another person. That's huge. He didn't completely discount it. If he had a reason to discredit that theory, he, he would have. He, he would have, and he couldn't. No, the bloody shoe prints that Henry Lee talked about. Yeah, it lines up with a possible right. second person. Right, right. And the knit cap. Yeah, the knit cap. That's a whole different set of questions. I mean, you have... Coincidence, perhaps? Maybe. But it sure is intriguing. You know what I think? It's time to look at Jason. Next time. When I interviewed Jason, he had some cuts on his left hand. I think he should have gotten more attention by the police. Jason Simpson was not even interviewed by anybody from the LAPD. No, there was so much evidence against O.J. Simpson that it was unbelievable. You assaulted a man named Paul Goldberg, correct? He started kicking me in the ribs, and he kicked me a few more times, and he said something like, next time I cut you.